So all the good news about vaccines, well, that seems to have gone away because we kind of thought, didn't we? We were coming out of lockdown and life was going to be better. Well, yesterday's bombshell from Downing Street means that whilst 42% of us were in tier one, it's now 1% of us that are in tier one and 24 million of us find ourselves in tier three, including my home county of Kent. Just because of one council out on the Isle of Sheppey, the whole of the county goes from tier one to tier three. How many times have I said over the course of the last few weeks that the cure is worse than the disease? And that wasn't an easy message to push a couple of months back, but I now think people are beginning to understand it. It's as if Boris Johnson and the government have got themselves stuck, stuck through fear, fear that in years to come people will say lots of people died and they didn't act. Well, one thing is for certain, lots of people are going to die. They're going to die because they've not been diagnosed with cancers, die because they've not been diagnosed with serious heart disease, die because many of the normal screening processes that go on within our health services simply aren't happening. Oh, it'll be okay. The 23rd of December, we'll be allowed to meet a couple of other families at Christmas. Here's the point. Whether you're bullish or not about these vaccines, and I think there are some practical problems we're already seeing, that AstraZeneca didn't test anybody on one of their uh, samples over the age of 55. We're also seeing that getting that Pfizer vaccine out, keeping it at minus 70 degrees, means there are huge logistical problems to come. And if you think about the way this government has handled everything since March, well, it seems to me to make a mess of everything, so why wouldn't they make a mess of the vaccine rollout? The brutal truth is that this government, with this mindset, is going to effectively keep us locked down until at least Easter. That is catastrophic for millions of self-employed small traders out there in this country. And frankly, in many parts of the United Kingdom, it just doesn't make medical sense either. Yes, this is a horrible, horrible virus that some people get affected very badly by. It's a virus that does kill some people, but to be fair, 95% of those that die already have a serious underlying health issue. So I'm not telling you there isn't a problem with this virus. For a certain percentage of the population, there is. But the price we're paying is crazy. We should be protecting the vulnerable if they want to be protected, but the rest of us have got to learn to live with this, have got to learn to get on with the rest of our lives. Now, I've been astonished since the start of this, the extent to which we've allowed our basic liberties and freedom to be taken away by a government who are frankly behaving like totalitarians. You know, the, idea that, the idea that they own Christmas and they're going to give us a few days off over Christmas. We're told by the chief medical officer, Mr Whitty, that we mustn't hug our grandparents, otherwise we'll never be able to hug them again. I can't ever think of a time when government was doing so much to try and scare the wits out of us. Well, to some extent, in the first six months of this crisis, that did work and people were very scared. But I now sense there's a growing rebellion out there in the country. No, I'm not advising people to break the law. That isn't my job. Although I am aware of something going on over the country that I never thought we'd see. Speakeasies. It's almost like the days of prohibition in America in between the wars. Pubs and restaurants opening up, putting, uh, you know, b blackout blinds um, on, on, on their windows. And, and, and people will start to break the law if they don't have respect for the law. I'm not advocating that, but I'm commenting that it is happening. But there's another rebellion happening that I think is potentially more important. You know that politically I've tried, I'm trying to get the Brexit Party rebranded as Reform UK, and I do want fighting the way these decisions are being made, fighting lockdown to be a part of that program. There are now about 70 backbench Conservative MPs who clearly are very unhappy after all. You know, if you've gone to bed in tier one and you wake up in tier three, your constituents are not gonna be very happy. That rebellion is growing. Boris Johnson is feeling the pressure. He's feeling the pressure on this. He's also probably feeling the pressure on Brexit too, where we face a couple of really 
crucial weeks. So what can we do? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. I'll tell you what you really must do. Bombard your Member of Parliament. Bombard them. Tell them that the cure is worse than the disease. Tell them to rebel, not just against the government next week, but against the Labour Party too, because the Labour Party are supporting all these lockdowns. It's almost as if our established political parties, and that includes the Scots, Nats and others, it's almost as if there's a competition for who can lock down the hardest. And much of that is because the mindset of these politicians, it's the mindset of the public sector. It's the mindset of those who, frankly, treat money as if it grows on trees. What about the private sector? What about all those people out there whose livelihoods are being destroyed? And I think there's a growing number of MPs beginning to understand this. So whether you've got a Labour MP, or whether you've got a Conservative MP, lobby them by email, by letter, and tell them to rebel against their party next week. And let's get back to a policy of common sense. It's a nasty virus, but we have to learn to live with it. We have to learn how to deal with it. So join the Democratic Rebellion, get on to your MP, and let's see Boris do another U-turn. After all, he's done plenty already.